the whole scheme of society has to be that no one is left behind nearly 75% of the artificial limbs of the world are fitted by this society only and that to free of cost we all long for that smile in the evening that when a patient comes and when he has to leave he 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 must have that smile on his face and that smile is our target the whole idea is that those who cannot move they should be able to move as good as any other person and with dignity you must have all heard about the jaipur foot jaipur foot is the hallmark of ingenuity for accessibility and in the words of elian and armand newkermans who connected bmvss which i'm going to talk about to stanford university it is not just about fitting limbs but also about restoring dignity to other human beings and in the process to ourselves because in giving we receive this is the story about jaipur foot which is being successfully run successfully fitted to a lot of people by bhagwan mahavir viklang sahayata samiti to answer our questions today we have uh, architect pr mehta who is the director of the delhi center of bmvss architect pr mehta also known as premendra raj mehta is parallelly a very accomplished architect academician and the voice of the profession as he was the former president of the council of architecture no introduction to architect mehta would be enough as you know he has a very accomplished career so with his permission we will straight away jump into the questions so how are you sir today very very well thanks so sir you know i gave a little bit of introduction but i am sure you are going to tell us more about the jaipur foot and about bmvss so sir my first question would be what is this organization and you know who founded it how was it started just tell us a little bit about it it's a very interesting story uh, it was uh, founded by my uncle shri tr mehta uh, who is uh, former chairman of sebi and um, he has been decorated with uh, padma vibhushan for his contribution to society through bhagwan mahavir viklang sahitya samiti this organization was uh, set up uh, by him uh, way back in 1975 so it's almost 45 year old organization and the idea came to him when he himself met with an accident when he was a collector of uh, jaisalmer and uh, he had to be brought to jodhpur uh, for an operation of his uh, leg which had got fractured he realized that uh, with all the possibilities and the facilities he had at his command and the family had at his command um, uh, he could get the treatment but what if it this happens to someone uh, who has uh, who cannot afford it or uh, who does not have the arrangement and the resources so uh, he thought that uh, this is something he would uh, work on while working with the government of india um, he started initiated this at jaipur uh, with the help of uh, craftsmen who could uh, make a limb exactly identical to what one would have had particularly the leg and uh, the activity started he also visualized this uh, as a service which he would do to society so in the first uh, meeting itself of the samiti he he and uh, his uh, other colleagues and some of uh, our family members they took a decision that they would never charge a person who would be benefited by the activities or by the fitment of the uh, artificial limb which will be done so since then it uh, uh, remains a service Uh, free of cost uh, to any beneficiary of um, uh, whether it is now a artificial limb 
or uh, other assistive uh, devices which are being provided so, so i'll cut you short sir you know our next question is all about the other devices that you're talking about so if you could tell us a little about what are prosthetics and you know who are the people who need them so could you just tell us about it so that we can you know go about See, the next question then jaipur foot primarily has dealt with amputees those for whatever reason um, their leg has got amputated it it could be a medical reason that you have had gangrene and it had to be cut you met with an accident and you lost your leg or it could be a war you see we have been working outside india also where we have had civil wars so like in afghanistan uh, like in rwanda burundi and uh, somalia M- many many countries uh, which are war torn uh, iraq uh, so uh, we ha- have been uh, providing this uh, to them and uh, that is one type of patient then gradually uh, once we started with this uh, we also found that uh, there are people who need a tricycle to move around because you see there are two principles our working and the functioning uh, dignity and mobility the whole idea is that those who cannot move to move they should be as good as any other person and so dignity. the dignity and mobility are uh, the cardinal principles of uh, our working and then uh, we provide the wheelchairs we provide the crutches we if there is a polio patient uh, we put calipers uh, and uh, things like that so it is uh, gradually it has happened when in 1975 when we started we dealt with about 3000 patient in the first year today we are able to assist about 80 to 90000 patients um, annually in india and abroad together uh, mm-hmm. because uh, not only we have about uh, 30 centers which are geographically spread all over india we also have some international associates we also have our own centers in manila in us there is a collaborator there are people who take uh, technical assistance from us and run their own centers like in pakistan and sri lanka so uh, we we work and um, i must uh, tell you that nearly 75% of the artificial limbs of the world are fitted by this society only and that to free of cost four years ago government of india entered into an mou with us that uh, wherever government feels Uh, through their embassies that uh, certain countries they would require this kind of an assistance so um, they um, uh, take uh, a team of bhagwan mahavir viklang sahayata samiti to that country and as a goodwill mission government of india is uh, providing this service through our society to various countries in the recent past we have been to vietnam we have been to myanmar we have been to bangladesh we've been to mauritius um, so many countries where government of india thought tanzania uh, that uh, we should be assisting so uh, we actually then carry the flag of india and uh, this is a, a great service and wherever we go we we get so much of uh, goodwill the country gets so much of goodwill because of this and we feel very proud of uh, little contribution we are able to make absolutely sir so this is you know when you speak about dignity and mobility together and you know the fact that 75% of the artificial limbs are being you know fitted by your organization that really means a lot so sir i want to ask like when you talk about the jaipur foot what is this jaipur foot actually and you know what are the other replacements you mentioned already that you give the tricycles and you give other fitments so can you tell us about the other fitments that you can think of right away and tell the view apart from the jaipur foot yes. the the i think there's a stanford knee that you also fit can you tell us about all of them yes you see you see be you see there are two facets of our working one is that we continuously deal with the beneficiaries who come to us for assistance and we quickly provide them um, either it is a artificial leg uh, what we call jaipur foot or any other device parallelly we continuously uh, work for improvement of uh, the fitment which we do our idea is that one is it should be as close to the natural foot one would have had in terms of shape in terms of uh, its weight in terms of its flexibility 
so that your movement is as natural as it would have been as you would have had a natural leg now uh, to cite you some of the examples uh, we have had dancers uh, um, uh, sudha chandran a famous dancer she has a jaipur foot um, we have uh, beneficiaries Uh, with the, both the legs fitted uh, by our uh, Bhagwan Mahavir Vikrant Sahita Samiti, and uh, they are able to drive motorcycle or bicycle. They can climb a tree. They can run. So uh, our endeavor is that the after fitment, uh, he should be one should be able to uh, perform all the functions uh, for which uh, the God had given him the leg. So that is our endeavor, and in that endeavor. we keep uh, doing research and development stanford is one with the university with one we are working we are working with many other universities in india like um, uh, mnit we are working with uh, jaipur manipal university uh, we are working with uh, uh, isro so many organization sometimes it is a metallurgical issue sometimes it is a plastic issue and uh, we we try and make with, there are two objectives with that one is as i said as natural as close to natural as possible second is as cost effective as possible you see our idea is that the limited resources we have can we not serve more people with that so optimizing the strength of the material is the second target we have and we have a complete r and d center of our own at jaipur and continuously a team works and we try and meet the standards you see there are bis standards for this so we try and meet those and though largely they also take our inputs but uh, that is what we do that uh, they should be stable uh, they should be safe and uh, minimum of repair uh, which should be required and so on so continuous research and development is an integral part of our scheme so you know apart from being a very good service as you mentioned this is also a very unique product so has the committee has your organization you know uh, patented this product and if it is patented is it available for other people to replicate it and you know make it and put it in other parts of the world what do you what does the organization think about this see uh, this debate is always on that should we uh, patent it should should we go in for uh, that kind of a thing but the idea is that uh, we feel that though at this moment we are doing 75% but the remaining also needs to be done and if somebody takes our help i will not call it a copy because we are always very open uh, to support any organization who in, in its own region within our country or outside our country is willing to carry forward this mission so we are absolutely open and we don't get into all that and whatever development we do we we quickly share it with our centers our associates those who only want technical inputs from us those who want a component from us uh, we put no barrier of any kind because we feel that whatever development work we have done be it science and technology with a human face whatever we have done it be available to everyone and poorest of poor at the uh, at no cost it should reach him so that part does not come in our mind though we are working uh, with uh, scientific organizations engineering organizations but our belief is uh, that it's a service to humanity and in that there can be no barrier so so that was you know that's a very noble mission again to share it with everybody and whoever comes to you the organization is very happy to share it with them so that they can take this work forward and provide dignity and mobility to all so my next question is about the organization what is the structure of the organization as you are the director of the delhi center how many more centers are there what is the geographical reach are you going to take it international can you tell us about it do the corporates fund it is it individuals who fund it just tell us something about that sir yeah you see it's a very interesting uh, i do not know an experience for me because i have I only been learning from my seniors and those who have initiated it that uh, they said very clearly that it must reach the beneficiary free of cost so that's the bottom line that anybody who walks in you don't need an appointment you you come to any of our centers you can just simply walk in 
and the total time cycle, the maximum is a day. That means working six to eight hours is the limit within which either you would be fitted with a leg or a hand or whatever assistive, uh, assistive device you require that will be provided to you and all that. Apart from operating the centers, we organize camps also. You see, that's another way of reaching out. We work with the government departments uh, and social welfare departments. They have a, a long list of those who are waiting for some kind of assistive device or a fitment of a leg and things like that. So we organize camps in almost every part of the country. And as I said, also outside India. So there um, it's an organized three day, six day, seven day camp uh, where um, we, we take our technical team and um, specialists uh, to that particular location and we do it. Last two last year, we, we did it in Northeast. We last year we did it in Nagpur. Very recently, three months ago, we did it in Jodhpur. And every time we deal with about 2000 patients, um, uh, something about that, they, all the camps are of uh, that size. So idea is that we will reach out. You see, our centers are about 30 centers we have in the country. Uh, you have it in uh, Chennai and you also have it in Guwahati. So you have it in Kashmir. So almost every state we have a presence. But apart from that, uh, we have these camps so that uh, nobody's missed out. Our objective is that anybody who requires our assistance, we would like to provide him and we will reach out. So we don't sit at our place, but uh, year round, anybody can walk into any of the centers and uh, he would be attended to without even asking who is he from where he's come. That's only for the record purpose because we look at a human being and a human being requiring something which we can do for him and we are too happy to do that for him. So that's uh, the, the reaching out program. Uh, when it comes to organization, uh, well, it's, it's now a part of Harvard's management studies, that how it works. Um, I must tell you that uh, our uh, overheads are not even 3%. You see, that's a unique organization where at all management level, everyone is a volunteer. Everyone is a volunteer at management level. And uh, we have cut down the operational costs or uh, the, you can say the, the cost of the product and we continuously work on that so that we work uh, very efficiently. We have a very dedicated team uh, of uh, professionals and technicians who, who, who strive to achieve their best. Um, they are trained uh, uh, to be, uh, I do not know how to put it, but you, you, see, you see, they appreciate the, the difficulty a patient has and their endeavor is that he must go back with a smile on his face. So we all long for that smile in the evening that when a patient comes and when he has to leave, he, he, he must have that smile on his face. And that smile is our target, that we must do that. And it must happen today. So the day he has come, that's the time frame. And everybody strives very hard uh, to, to, to get that reward, I should say, of whatever we do. So it's great to hear that the only reward that BMBSS seeks is a smile on the patient's face. And for the record, yeah. for all our viewers, the geographical reach of BMBSS is in Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Dominican Republic, Honduras, Nepal, Pakistan, Somalia, Tanzania, Sudan, and a lot of centers in India. So, so the next question that I'm going to ask you is regarding, you know, uh, how does a patient approach the organization? Do you have volunteers or representatives in other hospitals who, you know, guide such patients to the BMVSS centers or you have camps in the hospitals and, you know, is there a follow-up check required? How does this work? So if a, if a patient is listening or a relative of a patient is listening to this video, he must get the procedure of how to approach you. See, as I said, uh, if, if patient who, who wants to take uh, any um, service or any assistive device from us, he can straight away come to us. He, he doesn't, there is no formality. Uh, he doesn't even need to take an appointment by calling us or something. If he knows there is a center, 
he can just go there and he will be attended to. So that's part number one. Now, uh, Jaipur food is so well known that actually uh, the, the, the reference part, as you say, that from government hospitals or many, everybody knows that uh, because in governmental setup, uh, sometimes um, things are not available. They take a little more time. So uh, they are not really guided because they all know it is known in that community of uh, uh, Divyangs that if they need to get anything connected with this and the other facilities which we offer, uh, they would straight away come to us. So, um, uh, and incidentally, the first center was actually set up at SMS Hospital Jaipur. It was actually a, a joint effort uh, between a, a government and the very famous hospital of uh, Rajasthan, the best one, and uh, us. And that center is still continues to be there. Similarly, we have another seven uh, centers which are actually located in a government hospital in Hyderabad, in Kota, in Jodhpur. We are always very open because uh, we don't want patients to run around from one place to another. So if we could have our centers in a, a government hospital campus or even a private uh, hospital campus, uh, we are very happy to open more centers. Uh, even if it needs to be like uh, in a place like Delhi, even if you have two centers, it, it really doesn't matter to us. We are too happy to do that. So um, one is that, that um, because you see, we'll train some more people to do that. And uh, we want less and less people to move to avail this uh, um, benefit. So it should be as close to their place of residence uh, or wherever they are located, they are occupied as possible. We continuously, uh, whenever uh, there is somebody who is willing to take little responsibility, we send our technician. Uh, we actually start with uh, once a month kind of a center, then it becomes weekly, and then it's every day. Uh, because it is uh, sometimes not one off. If somebody needs a, a kind of a repair or something, uh, then also we say, okay, uh, you can come back. So we have all the models and we are open for even newer models. Anything which will help people to reach us as quickly as they can, uh, we would be very happy to always do that. So, you know, it, just to tell the viewers about the Jaipur foot. So the Jaipur foot is the world's most functional limb technology. It has virtually got the same range of functions as a normal human limb. Looks like a normal human limb. It's waterproof, maybe worn with or without shoes. Normal life is about three years. It has both contact socket and an outer socket. The above knee prosthetics is highly advanced ischial containment variety. While making the limb proper biomechanical alignment is ensured. It's a really quick fit limb. For example, below knee prosthetics can be made in three hours. And you know, it's lightweight, for example, for middle-aged persons, the socket with the bit and the Jaipur foot, the total weight of below knee, knee limb varies between just 1.3 to 1.5 kg. So that was the information about the Jaipur limb technology, which is the world's most functional limb technology. And today we had with us uh, PR Mehta sir, who has you know enlightened us all about the great noble work that BMVSS is doing so you know at the end sir you know so much information and so much we are all overwhelmed with the kind of work that you do and we have heard so sir is there a message that you would like to give to our viewers to end this conversation see compassion you see uh, the whole scheme uh, of society has to be that no one is left behind. so in whatever walk of life we are wherever we can help anyone that he gets his opportunity as much as anybody else has. I think we have done uh, the justice to our uh, whatever the purpose we have come in this world. So I think uh, that needs to be an endeavor of uh, every human being that no one is left behind. So whichever way, whichever walk of life you are, whatever little you can do, do that so that uh, we work for uh, whatever we have come in this world for. So that was uh, architect Premendra Raj Mehta, who's the director of the Delhi Center of the Bhagwan Mahavir uh, Viklang Sahayata Samiti. And we are very, very grateful to have him today in this important episode. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.